work it, make it, do it, make sense. Okay, welcome uh, to the last uh, session on the on DevOx, uh, normal session, I think. We have uh, one closing session uh, after us, but this is the, the last uh, session and where our talk is on virtual reality and also some stuff on how you can program for virtual reality and also the relation to, to Java. Um, Alex uh, and myself uh, were having a discussion about a year ago and he showed me some, some cool stuff with virtual reality. And, and I asked him, yeah, how do you do that? And he showed me some Unity program and said, okay, that's nice, but can we do something in Java? So we challenged each other and this is basically the journey that we took uh, yeah, in the path of a year. And this is our findings and uh, some, some, some findings are, are promising and some are less promising. And we'd like to take you uh, through our journey uh, during, this, uh, during this talk. So we're going to do that uh, through the following agenda. Uh, we're going to introduce ourselves very briefly and then we're going to uh, discuss a bit on what virtual reality is and briefly on some historical uh, facts of uh, virtual reality and the basics, but that's just uh, to get up to speed. And then we're going to talk about virtual reality and the relation to Java and how you can work with Java and virtual reality. And then we can do a, a comparison of uh, a simple game that we made in four different ways. Uh, and we're going to so show you what our findings are in what is the most productive and most uh, efficient way to develop such a game. So, short introduction, Alex. Yes, hi, uh, my name is uh, Alexander Gatsi Zacharias. You can lose the last part kind of long. Uh, I have three hobbies, uh, one of them is bouldering. Uh, another one is windsurfing, and uh, actually I'm a pretty vivid gamer myself, so I like to game a lot. Uh, I have a couple of achievements, badges, call them what you want, uh, under my belt. Uh, I'm a master in game studies, uh, I have a s uh, I'm a software engineer at CGI in the Netherlands, and I'm a, ja a Java 1 rockstar from 2016. Yeah, yeah that's me, Eric Pronk. Uh, I like to work out, like to run a lot, um, like to develop, like to code. Uh, and not as the picture describes, but I have a master of uh, a bachelor in food science, so I like to talk about food. Uh, my achievements, badges, what you call bachelor in food science, two-time finisher of a marathon, that's actually the thing that I'm very proud of, and uh, a software engineer at uh, JDriven. So, uh, virtual reality. Um, yeah, start with a question. Whoever uh, experienced, whoever who had a virtual reality experience, either a cardboard or a, a headset. Okay, maybe let I me rephrase. Who didn't? Okay, that's a better. <laughs> so I yes. Thoughts? Yeah, and who has had an experience uh, with the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vives and all that kind of stuff? So anything but the cardboard. Okay. So mostly, I think. Concluding that would be the cardboard, uh, but yeah, l we did this talk a few months ago, and yeah, the the the, the responses were different. Uh, virtual reality is really taking off, and a lot of pe persons, uh, people have yeah, had the experience the last few months or uh, uh, not so long ago. So virtual reality, what is virtual reality? Of course, you can look it up on the internet. You have a nice uh, definition of it on it. Uh, it's a computer-generated simulation. Uh, you can interact with it. Uh, it's seemingly real, and you can. Uh, use equipment to interact with, with the world and you have the feeling that you're in it. But what actually is meant by these words is that it's absolutely awesome. So that, that's more the definition that we're looking for. Yeah, so um, I think it's appropriate to give a little bit of history on virtual reality. Can someone take a guess when virtual reality really started? Anyone? A year? 70s. The 70s? No. 1960s. No. No. No, back, 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 way back, back, way back, way back. <laughs> In 1838, <laughs> the first stereoscopic viewers were uh, made. And you know the same, you, you have had them earlier, you know, uh, you, you have these like pictures with two sides and you put them in a viewer and they look like they're really immersive and in front of your eyes and all that kind of stuff. So pretty much er pretty early. <laughs> Uh, then we go 100 years in the future, and then the pretty much the first flight simulator was born, um, and people, uh, the pilots had to really step in a cockpit, really thing, and it was immersive, and they con and a really cheap computer. Well, back then probably not so cheap, but uh, all showed all kind of uh, stuff, 
and skies and etc. etc. Uh, in the 1950s, uh, the Sensorama uh, was released. Some of you might have heard of this. It's uh, especially on virtual reality topics. It's it has been discussed a lot as one of the first real immersive uh, machines that really uh, brought virtual reality up to speed back then. Uh, in 1968, the sort of Democles uh, was released that was like uh, the prototype of the HoloLens. Do you guys know the Microsoft HoloLens? So what the thing did, it was huge. It needed like two trucks to completely move the whole, uh, the whole machine. But uh, it actually showed primitives, cubes, and triangles in front of the eyes of the user. Pretty much what the Hollands can do uh, nowadays and what augment augmented reality does. Uh, in 1987, the, the, virtu the term virtual reality was born. Uh, there was a company that uh, was, uh, was pushing all kinds of projects and uh, consumer uh, well, uh, products uh, based on virtual reality, like gloves to play games and all kinds of stuff. Um, in 1995, the Nintendo Virtual Boy was released. Anybody that had one of these at home? Yeah, I would be surprised if anybody, anybody, anybody did have, because it was one probably the biggest commercial failure of Nintendo. But now it's worth a lot of money. Now it's worth a lot of money because there's only like 60,000 built of yeah. them. So. Um, but yeah, kind of commercial failure. Then we go into 2012, where the Oculus kick, uh, Kickstarter uh, happened, a uh, huge success, of course. And in 2016, the first really consumer-based uh, head-mounted displays, HTC Vives, uh, Oculus Rift, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, were released, and even all kind of other uh, machines that really help you immerse yourself in a virtual uh, world, like the Omni treadmill, where you can walk around and play Counter-Strike, uh, like a real soldier, if you ever wanted to. Yeah, and why? Yeah, virtual reality is hot. Uh, let's have some numbers. We have a 43, up to 43 million users all around the world, uh, and rising. Uh, 650,000 units, uh, head-mounted displays are, uh, are sold. Uh, uh, Oculus Vive, Gear VR, uh, name them. And with the cardboard side, you have 15 million cardboard apps are downloaded, and the last year was a huge explosion uh, in the amount of apps for virtual reality and also the downloads of it. So it's really taken off. Anybody here know what the most popular uh, cardboard app is? Could anyone want to do a guess? Virtual reality cardboard app, sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> Pokemon? No, 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 right no, no, no. It's, it's uh, a chair, uh, chair in a room. It's a kind of uh, it's, it's an immersive uh, game. A game, yeah, it's a game. It's a, an adventure where you go on a really dark, uh, in, in a really dark room where there's one chair and then you hear sounds and the chair moves and you don't see anything and it's, it's kind of a scary game. And it's uh, the most popular game that was by, by far most downloaded uh, on the Google App Store. So if you have a cardboard, it's free yeah. as far as now. So it's free. So give it a try. Give it a try. Why? Uh, it's getting more and more common, of course, but it's new. Huh? It's, 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 it's a new, new technology. Everybody has a new feeling and a new experience with it. It works. Huh? You actually know that you are flying. You, you feel the wind through your hair. Uh, everything reacts in the same way. You feel free. Huh? You fly like a bird. Yeah, and it's immersive. It's fun. You actually want to take that final step and dive into the pool, but you're not in the pool, so <laughs> you, it, it's really, really taken off. So, and, and most of that because the, the displays really live up to the, the, the experience that you expect. It's, it's, it's getting so much better, and it's even getting better day by day. Yeah, so when we started with this little thing, uh, we looked at like all the, ob all the, um, uh, the hardware that was available, and uh, uh, we tried, uh, tried pr pretty much everything uh, to see what was best to use and whatnot. So this is our little star rating we put in ourselves. So it's our own opinion, so yeah. by no means necessarily the truth. <laughs> but close to it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you have, this, uh, the, you have the HTC Vive. It's uh, made by HTC, but the software is made uh, by Valve, the, which also uh, makes Steam a huge uh, game platform. 
and uh, you can really see the influence of Valve because it's completely integrated in Steam with a lot of games and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And the most um, uh, the cool thing about the HTC Vive is uh, out of the box it tracks your movements, uh, actually your steps. So if you walk around, it completely tracks you around in the digital world. So you can really walk, uh, walk around with a headset on. Uh, the Oculus Rift, uh, the, uh, the first version uh, didn't have that. Nowadays, you can also do that with uh, Oculus Rift. But uh, performance-wise, the HTC Vive is a bit better than the Oculus Rift. Uh, when you think about virtual reality, you actually want to aim at 90 frames per second. Uh, when I say frames per second FPS, does, does anybody here uh, have like something like, I have no idea what he's talking about? OK, that's good. That's easy. Makes easy it makes, makes it easier for us. <laughs> so yeah, you, for virtual reality, you aim at 90 FPS. And the HTC Vive mostly can, uh, can do that. And the Oculus Rift some, uh, sometimes struggles. And the PlayStation VR, which is the latest of the three, actually almost never reaches that 90 FPS uh, threshold. So that's where a lot of people also get uh, uh, a feeling of nausea when they use the PlayStation uh, VR. Motion sickness. Motion sickness, exactly. Yeah. Um, and finally, we have uh, the Gear VR and the cardboards, um, probably the most accessible uh, devices because they are very, very cheap. Uh, you can make a cardboard uh, yourself with like three dollars or pounds or uh, euros or whatever. Uh, very accessible, and you have the Google Play Store, uh, very easy to download, all kinds of apps. Yeah, I was uh, uh, looking at the common uses. Yeah, Alex uh, already mentioned uh, for the Vive, uh, huge gaming uh, uh, background, huge gaming community. Yeah, that's one of the, the common usages. Simulation is the other one, healthcare and 360. Uh, if you look at the games, uh, no, you've got like the chair in the room, of course, what I discussed, but this is, this is another, it's a, scare room, a scary game. People really dive into the game and actually are e genuinely frightened. Um, you have yeah, things that you can build. You can create your own world around you. Uh, this is how it uh, how it's built. It's a HT5 game, uh, also on the Oculus Rift, I think. Uh, but you can create a, a world and you can uh, make it work and make it work for you and uh, experiment uh, a lot with things. And you have also other fun games like Audio Shield, where you work out and listen music at the same time and uh, hit the notes uh, with with your hands and move around. Uh, really fun. Um, but yeah, be also simulation. Uh, in, in simulation, uh, uh, you, yeah, you already think uh, racing, etc. But you also have really nice simulators like uh, Godzilla Simulator that you can actually know what the feeling is to yeah, crash, uh, crash a city. So that, that's something that you r is really useful in real life. Uh, yeah, the traditional ones, uh, the race simulating, uh, because yeah, now Formula One, uh, yeah, uh, Max Verstappen didn't get that good because he just carded. He also did a lot of race, race simulators, knowing the tracks. So that's Real good, but also uh, emergency situations. How do you react uh, uh, taking people uh, onto a virtual experience in an emergency situation makes them react more uh, naturally and when that actually happens. So that, that, that's really, uh, yeah, good, 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 uh, good practice. Healthcare, uh, it's really hard to get people out uh, and work out, but if you make the uh, experience more fun, then people are tend to go out more and work out more. So that, that's good, but not only that, uh, doctors and uh, medical researchers, researchers can, uh, can, can use 3D modeling uh, in, in the virtual reality to make much more uh, uh, accurate diagnostics uh, so uh, the, the, yeah, the, they can find diseases more easily or uh, operate more uh, accurate. Um, and exposure therapy. Uh, this is uh, someone who is afraid of heights, uh, has a lot of uh, uh, problem with heights, uh, and they just lay a plank uh, in a room, so the, the situation is totally safe, but the situation is actually uh, not so safe, and um, yeah, they get ex uh, exposed to, to their height uh, fear, and researchers show that it is much more efficient than the normal therapy, so that's a real good uh, usage. Then actually no, walking down the plank. plank, yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's also <laughs> <laughs> lower dead rates. <laughs> but the 360, uh, yeah, of course, you can uh, experience a concert, uh, a theater. Uh, you can be in the middle of a concert, and that, that's absolutely great. Uh, but after a day of hard work, uh, you want to relax uh, into a 
desert area where there's no sounds, uh, where you can look around, uh, breeze through your hair. So yeah, that, that, that's nice to, to, to totally relax. But sports, that's the most catching thing I've, I see over here. Uh, and I would have paid a lot of money for yesterday evening to be to be uh, to uh, experience the last three minutes of Lyon Ajax uh, in a virtual way. God. So <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> VR in so Java, yeah. Alex. So now we are where, where we should be, I think. Yeah. Uh, virtual reality in Java, you know, uh, it's very interesting. Um, if you guys think about virtual reality in Java, do you can does a platform pop up which this is well a nature uh, to it where you can code virtual reality in Java? Android. Android. Yeah. Yes. So. Um, Android is indeed the one of the things we're going to discuss, probably the biggest thing we're going to discuss. But there is a one, uh, second thing but which we're not going to really discuss, but we're mentioning for completeness. It's uh, JMonkey Engine. Does anybody know JMonkey Engine? Yeah, so like, uh, like the 90% of the rest of the world. So it's a game engine written in Java, and you can code, for it in, uh, code games uh, with it in Java. Uh, but the um, community is very small. Um, updates are very... Uh, scars and compared to other game engines out there like uh, Unity, um, Unreal, CryEngine, etc., etc., is vastly inferior. So uh, we looked at, uh, we looked into it a little bit, but we didn't really necessarily it was uh, even a contender to uh, creating virtual reality applications uh, for it. But n uh, next to that we have uh, Android smartphones, indeed. Uh, with the whole cardboard thing and the Galaxy Gear thing, it's probably a very interesting platform to uh, look into on how to create virtual reality apps uh, on uh, with Android Native. Yeah, sorry. Can, can you click it away? Thank you very much. So, um, Android Native, what do you need to? Uh, thank you. What do you need to um, to build for uh, Android Native? Uh, actually, you need Android Studio or IntelliJ. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you can also use uh, Eclipse or one of your own uh, IDEs. But Android Studio really makes it very easy because it comes comes packaged with an Android SDK and, and pretty much everything you need for uh, Android. It also comes packaged with Gradle. I know uh, some developers aren't really, f uh, really fond of Gradle, but you can also use it with Maven. And uh, next to that, you also need uh, the Cardboard SDK, so which is uh, f uh, freely available from the Google developer side. So no big hurdles here. Um, it has uh, a, a couple of pros and a couple of cons. Uh, well, the biggest pro, of course, is you're coding in Java, right? So that's what we'd love to do, and that's what you can do. Uh, Performance-wise, um, it's a... It's a really nice uh, addition because, uh, well, you code in, in OpenGL, and OpenGL is really fast. Um, but there are some uh, struggles with that, and the community is really big. So there are a lot of people working uh, on this uh, over the uh, over the whole world, and Stark Stack Overflow, for example, is filled with people uh, asking questions about how do I code uh, a VR in uh, Android. Uh, the cons. Um, you, you can only use it on smartphones, um, of course, and, and you're limited by the platform, you know, so what an Android device can do, that's pretty much everything you can do. And uh, you have to use OpenGL for 3D manipulation and all that kind of stuff, which can, be get, can get really irritating, but we'll get to that once we, sh we start showing the code. Yeah, it's trying to work ahead, sorry, but... Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Let's put it in again. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to show you a little demo. You have to show the screen. Yeah, what? Yeah, it, it should come. It sh there we go. The phone screen. And you have to stop the presentation. So uh, we have actually five demos for you today. Uh, one is a 360 video and image uh, demo, and another one is um, there we go. 
and uh, uh, the other four are the same uh, virtual reality application. Yeah. Um, so there we go. So this is uh, a simple photo demo. I'm just uh, selecting photo from a gallery. Um, and uh, above uh, one, um, well, I don't know if you guys recognize this guy. Anybody? AJ Smith, yeah. So this is, this is an ordinary picture, which is kind of rendered in a 3D, uh, 360 way. No, um, really fun. Uh, so if you really take a 360 picture, you can imagine this looks pretty, pretty nice. And then you have uh, the, uh, the under one is uh, a video, which now just turned, just finished, of course. So don't worry, don't worry. But uh, so like this, you can very easy just add 360, a 360 view in your uh, applications or a 360 uh, video view. Yeah, presentation. Yeah. yeah, I think you need to show the code. Yeah, absolutely. I think you guys want to see the code, right? Yes. So first of all, uh, Alex. Uh, it shows the 360, um, 360 images. Um, yeah, you need to do define a layout XML for that uh, in Android. Uh, it, it, has anybody worked in Android, actually? Yeah, so you in Android, you work with views, and you have to define what's in a view, and that become, uh, that's in a layout XML. Yeah, yeah so this is a layout XML. Uh, it's a VR panoramic view. And then you need to give it an ID and some some properties, uh, and a width and a height. That's, that's what you what you do with it. And next next to that, you uh, define a VR panoramic view, which is in the following uh, path per package, and you bind it to to the to the layout XML. Is it? You have the ID over here, so find view by ID. So you bind it to that view. Uh, and you do the same over here. You have some options uh, where you have the panel options, which is uh, uh, the most important is uh, type stereo over under, which actually means is it picture taken by a 360 camera, uh, which has the top and bottom, which is a bit more different, or is it a, is it a normal picture that you need to render in a 360? Yeah. Uh, and then you load that one. Uh, it can either be uh, in your uh, package or you can load it from an external source. Videos isn't that very, uh, isn't that different? Uh, you have the layout XML again, in the view definition, and you have an uh, again you have the ID and you set some properties. Uh, not that very uh, sophisticated, um, and you bind that in a VR video view. It can be found in the following package. Uh, again, the ID is uh, uh, the binding factor over here, so it finds it by the ID, uh, and again. Same here, the option uh, stereo over under 360 video, you need to use that. And then you can uh, load the video from the assets uh, and it can either be uh, a local uh, packaged file or you can refer, uh, refer to something that's on the internet or something like that. Uh, and then you play it. Uh, and that's basically uh, how you do the 360 videos and the 360 yeah. pictures. It's, it's very simple, very simple. So, um, within a couple lines code you, you do some. But now we're going to the demo that we created for four platforms. Yeah. So, uh, when, when I was thinking about what kind of demo to make, um, as a pretty much as a someone in uh, with a games background, I was like immediately, it has to have explosions or some something with explosions. So, so we lasers. create um, <laughs> we create a simple application. Uh, you can walk around. There is a cube floating around and being rotated. So there's explosion. So what you can do is when the, uh, the cardboard has a trigger and the, uh, and the Galaxy uh, gear also has a thing that you can tap on the side uh, and that we use that as an input um, to shoot a laser and if you aim at the, at the box and you hit it, you hear explosion sound that you hit the box and that, that you actually can and it responds and then you can do it again and again and again and again and again there we go so it's a very simple demo, um, but it kind of shows uh, how virtual reality looks um, based uh, with pure uh, Android native code. Oh. <laughs> yes. 
So how do you actually build what you just saw? Uh, <laughs> very interesting. It's, uh, for me, um, has anybody worked with Unity before? Uh, do, you guys, you do, do you know what Unity 3D is, the game engine? So it's a very, uh, very advanced game engine, which I've done a lot of work uh, with. And then I had to step back from that uh, advanced game engine to Android Native and uh, OpenGL. So uh, it was really fun, fun uh, to do. So if, when, you, uh, when you start with Android 3D VR, uh, your layout XML looks actually, uh, this is pretty much everything uh, you have in your XML file. Uh, you have a GVR view and you pretty much say, my whole screen is a GVR view and that's everything I want in here. And then uh, you need um, a class um, uh, that extends from the uh, GVR activity and implements the stereo renderer uh, interface. Um, in Android, activities are pretty much uh, the entry points uh, of, uh, you have a main activity and that's the entry point of your application. And here what you actually say is my main activity, the entry point of my uh, application is a GVR and virtual reality activity, uh, which I want to use. And with that you get some standard stock uh, methods which you use to uh, implement uh, your virtual reality stuff. Uh, on create, uh, well, exactly what, what you would think it does. Uh, this is called uh, once when the application is created, when the activity is created. And here you can do all kind of everything you want to do on initialization. Uh, for example, here we set the content view for, uh, uh, to be a virtual reality based. And we set the, uh, the GVR view to have a GVR object. So pretty simple. Um, on service created, um, I don't know if there are fans of OpenGL here or vivid users of OpenGL here or anything. I would have, I would have expected so. Um, but uh, OpenGL, um, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, first it has to create all its services, all its 3D data and all that kind of stuff. And once that is done, uh, this is called. So uh, anything you want to happen when OpenGL is ready to be used, uh, is put in the on-surface created method. And further, furthermore, you have the on-new frame method. This is probably the most important method uh, from, uh, of everything uh, because this is called every frame, before every frame is uh, done and uh, rendered. So for example, um, the, if you want to log your frame rate, if you want to know what your FPS is, you have to put it on the on-new frame uh, 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 method. And here, for example, what we do is we get the head transform. That's for the rotation of your head. Uh, very important in virtual reality, of course, to track the head of the user. And we actually set the camera to follow the head and uh, actually change based on the rotation, the pitch and the yaw, as called in virtual reality terms, uh, of the head. And then we do some other transformations and all that kind of stuff. Uh, on draw eye, uh, as you saw, you have two eyes. When you, once you put the phone in the cardboard, you don't really necessarily see it that, um, that well that there are two eyes because of the lenses, but you have two eyes. And this function is called uh, every before, uh, before uh, an eye is drawn, is ready to be drawn. So it's not necessarily the same as uh, on your frame, every frame, because it, it's not uh, frame rate dependent. Uh, so stuff that has to happen on the rendering of the eye uh, uh, is happening here, uh, which isn't essentially a lot. Um, this is pretty much also everything I've, I have uh, put in that method myself. And uh, eventually you have a cardboard trigger, and that's exactly what you would think when the cardboard trigger is pulled. Uh, we shoot a laser and we, we, vibrate, uh, we vibrate the phone, and that's pretty much it. Um, when you go on drawing in 3D, uh, you work with uh, OpenGL, and the Android native OpenGL uh, class is called uh, GLS20. Um, it's pure hell to work with it. I, I can't put it anything in other, any other words. Um, I've uh, almost sat in the corner crying because I had to, to make this, uh, this work. Uh, I can really tell you exactly how it works uh, uh, and what you need to do, but I think I would need another two or three hours to explain everything thoroughly. So what you need to know is um, you have your vertex data 
and that's a position in a 3D space. Uh, it's a, th a vector three uh, coordinate, so to say. Uh, so coordinate on the x axis, on the y axis, and on the z axis. And then the OpenGL knows when it needs, where it needs to place uh, an object in its 3D world, in 3D environment. You need color data with uh, RGBA data. This should be pretty self-explanatory, right? And you have normal data, which actually defines the face of a 3D object. So from which side uh, should this object be uh, visible? And uh, that's mainly used for lightning, uh, for lightning uh, calculations. So uh, shadows and darkness and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and when you want to move uh, 3D objects, uh, you use matrix. Everything works with matrix calculations. If anybody did some higher degree math uh, over here, then he would have done something with ma uh, matrices, I would um, imagine. Um, and I'm not talking about the movie here, by the way. Um, so everything works with matrices. So every model, uh, everything in the 3D world is actually a float array of 16 uh, uh, numbers. Uh, for example, the laser uh, is an array, and what I do here is I set its identity matrix to be uh, zero, pretty much. And then I rot you can rotate the matrix uh, based on the pitch, your uh, head up and down, or the yaw, your head left and right, on a certain axis. This is the z-axis, so I rotate it on the z-axis by the pitch. And this I rotate on the uh, i-axis by the yaw. And then I can actually place the laser uh, exactly in front of the, of the camera. So when I look here, the laser actually gets spawned here. But when I look there, the laser actually gets spawned there. So that's exactly what this uh, piece of code does. And then on every frame, I translate the, metric, the matrix of the laser uh, by uh, 0 0.5 uh, steps. So it actually moves forward. That's pretty much what's happening here. And if you do want to do some very basic, and I mean very, very basic uh, object collision, which is necessary to, well, make explosions happen, um, you, have, uh, you need to grab the model cube uh, 14 number, that's the Z position, and check it with uh, laser Z position with a certain offset. And then you know, well, it's, uh, if it's within those bounds, then it's almost there. And then do the same on the I position, and then you know that the, cube is pro the laser is probably around the same position as the cube. And then you have a collision, and then you can actually uh, spawn a sound, which happens uh, using the GVR audio engine. And this is probably the easiest thing you can do, uh, that you have to do in virtual reality in Java. Uh, you just need to create a GVR audio engine object uh, with a nice high quality. Uh, preload the sound, in a, preferably in another thread. Otherwise, the main thread has to wait until the sound is loaded. And you don't want that. Uh, create the sound object and eventually play the sound. Oh, you can, and you can also set the sound uh, object position to have a nice 3D sound effect and other kind of stuff, like your stere stereo sound. Um, because I hated, um, I hated uh, uh, 3D so much, I decided that uh, I, need to, I needed to use something else, uh, another um, uh, framework. And there was Rajivali, which can be found here. And we have an Android SDK uh, and a Rajivali and an Android Studio. Um, um, and actually, how this works is we have a layout XML, um, uh, which looks exactly the same as the cardboard, uh, by the way. Um, and yeah, furthermore, we get into uh, the code, the real code. Uh, we have a VR activity, um, which can be found in the project uh, Rajavali over there. And again, the onCreate. But the big difference here is that you don't actually start spawning stuff here and start doing stuff here, but you create a Rajavali example renderer. And you, and you set the renderer uh, in, uh, with, uh, using that function, that method. And furthermore, that's everything the main activity has to do when you, if you use uh, Rajivali. This is very important. And furthermore, again, you have a cardboard uh, trigger which you can use to spawn a bullet or a laser, something like that. Um, the VR render, which, uh, which, uh, which uh, I just showed, uh, which is just shown, um, it has a method called init scene, and this is called every time a scene is uh, initialized. Um, this structure allows the user to have multiple scenes within the main activity. 
which is very important if you want to do uh, switching between scenes, switching between worlds, all the kind of stuff. Rajavali allows you to do that. It's very, very interesting. And what I do here is, for example, um, uh, create a directional light in the world, uh, add the light, uh, set the far plane so the camera actually doesn't render anything uh, farther than 1,000 units and a certain background color. And that's pretty much it. Um, the on render uh, function with uh, Rajavali uh, is the same as the on new frame uh, function uh, of the Google uh, uh, native SDK, Carpet SDK. So this is actually called every frame. Uh, for example, here uh, with Rajavali, I'm looking uh, every frame uh, if I'm looking at the cube. I'm checking uh, if I'm looking at the cube. Uh, move, spawning and using 3D objects. This is probably the biggest plus point of Rajavali uh, compared to the Google v uh, Cardboard VR is that you can use primitives. So instead of having to define everything as a matrix and a float matrix myself, I can just create a new sphere with a certain radius, uh, assign it the material, uh, set the material, set the color, set its position, set its rotation, and then just add it in the scene and you have a bullet. You have a sphere in your scene. It's as easy as that. And then if you want to move it, instead of having to translate its matrix, all you need to, you can just call uh, a, a function they made, move forward with a certain step, and, you, and your bullet goes forward. And finally, audio is exactly the same as uh, you know, the Google uh, Cardboard SDK, so nothing uh, new there. Yes. Did you want to show the demo of Rajivali? Yes, maybe that's a good idea to sh show you how this guy, uh, how it looks. Yeah, let me stop the presentation for. And let's go here. Yes. So the thing with, with Rajivali is that it does make uh, things uh, very, uh, very easy and out of the box. But <coughs> you, as you can see, it is up, uh, Yes, it is inverted and with a reason, because if a change and turn it around, uh, all the coordinates in the world actually get uh, kind of screwed up. So, for example, the, the bullets uh, are completely inverted, so they're actually spawning behind you now. And I looked around and I searched around, and it looks like it's really a bug within the Rajavali framework. Um, so what I would advise is use the Google Cardboard um, native uh, VR uh, implementations and combine it with the Rajat Valley primitive stuff to create an easy way uh, to implement virtual reality in Android. Uh. Yeah. Going back to the presentation. No! <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm going way back in the presentation. <laughs> yeah, you're sure. <laughs> okay, this was uh, the Android part. So, hi. hi. Um, yeah, we we showed how to do it uh, for Java uh, using Android or Wajuwali. Uh, there are also some other ways to to do it, and we'd like to show it uh, uh, now. Uh, the first one is uh, is WebVR. WebVR is an open standard. Uh, it makes it possible for uh, you to have an experience of VR in the browser. Uh, the goal is to make it easier for everyone uh, to have a VR experience. And it has been around uh, since 2014 and has been developed by Mozilla VR team. Uh, it consists of three components, uh, WebGL, and it takes care of the 3D rendering, uh, 3GIS, which is G uh, J JavaScript library for 3D in browsers, and the WebVR API, which makes yeah, everything possible, uh, like navigation, tracking, etc. Uh, there are two fr main frameworks within uh, WebVR. Uh, the first one is A-Frame, um, which is developed by the Mozilla VR team. And it's a, it's just a web frame standard uh, that works on the DOM, and you can use it with uh, yeah, with all your favorite libraries. And it is, uh, and you also have a React uh, VR framework, which is uh, from the guys uh, from the React. It's also, of course, uh, Facebook, uh, Oculus. So that's kind of uh, a buy-in, uh, and you can do everything from uh, from a JavaScript uh, site uh, using a React uh, framework. Uh, I created a, a, fra a demo uh, based on A-Frame which I'm going to show, no, yes, okay, there should be a box somewhere in the world, there should be a box, yeah, it's getting away from me, 
So, basically the same demo, only a bit different. It's the most difficult part is hitting. Also explosion, <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> uh, no, that was the code, so that, that's not that difficult. Make sure you play from the current slide this time. Yes. Yes, okay. That works, right? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Briefly go through the, uh, through the code. Yeah, what you need to do uh, from an A-frame uh, perspective is uh, include the framework. And uh, the framework is, uh, of course, a library, a JavaScript library. It can be uh, obtained uh, at aframe.io. Uh, you can uh, use the script tag. Uh, I use uh, 0 0.2, but 0 0.5 is the latest version. Uh, I use 0 0.2 because uh, I use two external libraries, uh, which come from Kevin uh, NGO, which is one of the main developers of uh, A-frame uh, and the Google VR team, uh, Google uh, Mozilla VR team. And so I use that. You can use external libraries. After that, you need to register components eh? because we have uh, a box in the world. We want to uh, uh, interact with it. We want to shoot it. We want to uh, move a laser. So you need to register components to do that. You need to do that before you declare the HTML part of the of A-frame. Uh, and you can do that very easy. Uh, A-frame.register component. I register the click listener over here. Uh, which actually uh, has a function, an init function, and uh, you can uh, uh, do something uh, when it's a click, so the, the, uh, the, uh, the laser is shot, and there's a lot of JavaScript behind it, but I'm not going to show that here, that's in, uh, uh, that's in GitHub, uh, and it, it plays the sound. And then the, the biggest part of the HTML, of, of, of uh, the A-frame framework, uh, is the is the HTML? It's 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 really compact. What you see over here, eh, the on top you have the scene, which is the 3D world. You define it like this. You have assets like sounds, uh, texture, sky, etc. Uh, and you have entities uh, like Alex also mentioned for Raju Wally part. You have uh, primitives. You, uh, you see the A box over here. That's a primitive style. You have a lot of other primitives. Uh, and you can use them, you can give them uh, texture, you can give them position, you can give them uh, animations, which we did over here. You saw the box move, so that's why I wasn't able to hit it that well. Um, and then you, uh, uh, you have another entity which is uh, uh, vital, that's the camera. Uh, and the camera basically says the, it's the line of sight that, you, that you're looking at. Um, and as the background, you see a tag called Sky, which actually generates uh, everything that's around the world. And you can use it, what, I, what you saw was a 3D picture, um, a 360 picture, uh, but you can use anything for, for that. So moving yeah. on to Unity. Yeah, so yeah, well, uh, as a Unity guy myself, I had to make the same thing I made with OpenGL in Unity. Mm -hmm. um, which, yeah, uh, was significantly easier. So we, we have the same demo, but I think uh, because of the time, uh, I'll skip this one. Um, it's, yeah, it's practically the same, except stuff looks better and we actually have explosions. Better explosions, yeah, better yeah, ex explosions. Exactly, yes. exactly. So uh, w if you start up Unity, well, of course, you have to download Unity, all the kind of stuff, but actually well, all you need to do uh, within Unity is go to uh, project settings, uh, the player settings, and then tick this, this one box, virtual reality supported, load the cardboard uh, SDK, and ta-da, you have virtual reality in Unity, and every time you build, it's actually uh, virtual reality. So that's everything you need to do uh, with Unity to actually enable virtual reality. And then uh, doing the same stuff, um, all, you need to, uh, all you need is the standard Unity engine uh, classes. Um, and for example, update is a function that also runs every frame. Um, and then uh, Unity uh, out of the box uh, checks uh, if uh, uh, maps the mouse button zero, that your left click on the uh, mouse trigger, so you can just check uh, is, my, is my left click pressed is actually the same as is my trigger pressed, and if that happens, I just spawn a bullet uh, on a certain position uh, with a, uh, 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 added with a certain vector, the right vector, that is the z-axis, uh, um, uh, with a, cer a certain offset, and then give it a rotation, and then the bullet flies. So uh, very simple, one, p one line, and you actually have a bullet and then if you want to actually move it, uh, you grab, again, its position. It's, uh, again, a vector 3 uh, uh, object. Uh, and you add a certain, uh, a certain speed uh, every frame. Uh, this is uh, the time it took the unit to complete each frame. So every frame, you do uh, a certain speed on a certain vector, and it moves forward. 
And so that's pretty much everything he does. And if you want to do audio, this is pretty much everything you need to do. You get the audio source of a certain component, and you play it, and that's pretty much it. So you need a lot of clicking around, actually, and adding stuff, uh, components to objects. And uh, on the code side, it's very light. You're also going to see that on comparison, because yeah, we, we, we had to compare stuff. Yeah, so we do it only on, on, on certain areas. Yeah. So it's a as, very tec as technical as possible. So yeah. we, we started with the build size, so the actual build size of the APK of the stuff, how big, how big is it? Uh, Unity is a whooping uh, 45.87 megabytes. So I can't expect that because Unity actually builds a lot of stuff uh, with, your, uh, with your build. Uh, the web VR is actually 5.5 uh, megabytes, and yeah. the biggest portion of that are the photos. Five, the files. Files. Yeah. five megabytes of the photos, so it's yeah. basically uh, way smallest. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Roger Valley, it's, uh, its own is 9.45 uh, megabytes, and Android is 12.21 megabytes. This was very particular to me. I uh, didn't expect this one. So apparently, if you use the cardboard SDK, it, uh, it's really uh, a lot of class, a lot of stuff that gets packaged with uh, the with, uh, application. Secondly, we have the lines of code. Unity, I did this in 85 lines of code, um, so very quickly. Uh, WebVR is uh, 175 lines of code, and mostly because of the JavaScript uh, that's uh, added uh, to well, it. It's like 140 lines of JavaScript, and the rest is HTML. Yeah. So if you use Roger Valley, the you have 245 uh, lines of code. And if you go the native way with OpenGL native, you're uh, over 1,000 lines of code. And 500 of those lines of code are actually uh, matrix definitions of your objects. So what are, the f what are the positions, what are the vertex, normals, et cetera. It's a lot of stuff um, that you actually don't, don't want to think about if you're making VR, uh, virtual reality applications. So uh, next we have the, the frame rate, which I was very uh, enthusiastic about to, to discover what frame rate was best, until I discovered that Android uh, OS natively caps everything at 60 FPS, which really made this race a little bit anticlimactic, to be honest. And then we also discovered that Firefox, uh, for example, also caps its frame rates on 60 uh, FPS. So as far as we could tell, the only um, the only browser that doesn't natively cap its frame rates is Google Chrome, but can, can be capped by, for example, Windows or uh, the Mac OS uh, mm -hmm. if, uh, if they feel like it. Google Chrome can go up to 90 frames per second. Yeah. That's where the tests have been done with it. Yeah. And finally, our own uh, feeling uh, and our uh, amount of uh, what the fucks during development, so, so to say. Well, of course, as uh, a Unity native guy, I had like very relaxed. Uh, uh, stuff and within an hour we're at the demo done uh, using uh, well WebVR. Uh, well, you had to use JavaScript. So, what more do you need to say about that one, right? Yeah, and the other part they were actually the breeze to the park. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, Rajivali actually had to kind of do, especially the bugs in the in the framework itself, produced a lot of what the fuck moments. For example, what's happening here? Uh, why is this happening? All the kind of stuff. And yeah, I, I I don't think you can even count the amount the amount of frustration and what the fuck moments uh, we had during uh, developing in OpenGL. Uh, you uh, don't want to know. Uh, you don't really don't want to know. So, uh, so uh, that's basically it. I, I hope you learned something. Um, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please vote. And the uh, code of all demos can be found uh, on these two GitHub pages. Yeah, and if you have any questions, we'll be here. Uh, and or there. Or there, but bas mostly here now. <laughs> so. We have one minute left, I see, so that's pretty... One question. <laughs> Any question? Okay, well, that's easy enough. Thank yeah, you very much. Question, oh. Yeah, question, yeah, question. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> does anybody, any of them have uh, 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 A physics engine, no. Uh, you can download a uh, third-party physics engine if you want, for Android. So there are physics engines for uh, Android, but you have to download them separately and use them separately. Yeah. In With uh, yeah, in, with in Aimframe, Android? it can. With Aimframe, yes. Yeah, but and also Android? with uh, React VR, you can use that together. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>